It's Sunday the 8th of April 2018. I've been doing some updates on ASX Gold development stories that I like since, well, since all of all of 2017, and I've been focusing on a couple of specific ones. And I wanted to add uh, one to that category that I've bought into recently, which is Echo Resources. I'd been looking at this stock probably back in 2016 when it had a good run. I saw a couple of a few broker reports on it, and it didn't didn't really look like it had a lot. Uh, but since then, they've really um, improved their resource base uh, through exploration. This is their their latest um, project. The uh, what's really sort of alerted me to this has been Northern Stars bought into this stock in the last three or four months in a really big way, uh, almost up to the you know maximum limit of 20% of the stock. And they bought their they bought their first stake at around 27, I think, and their most of their latest stake at around 37. So they they bought well above the latest price, which is 27 and a half cents. Market cap's about 170. Actually, this is a bit this is based on 35 cents. So the market cap's only about 130, 140 million at the moment. Um, and they you can see here this really good growth in uh, resources over the last couple of years, and they've got. In reserve, they've got 700 uh, or 850,000 ounces, which forms the basis of the project. They're, uh, they've also got a processing plant at Bronzewing, uh, which they need to refurbish. But the capital cost to do that and the capital cost to develop those pits, I think you're probably looking at sort of uh, 30 to $40 million to bring it into production, which is a very attractive proposition. Uh, something like Gascoigne Resources, I think, they're looking at sort of, you know, their overall project costs 90 to $100 million to develop if they stick to their cost guidance. Uh, so this this looks to have similar um, all-in sort of cost um, metrics as Gascoigne, but that really low startup cost is really, it really helps with uh, share dilution. And um, I think that's why Northern started bought in here. So, you know, conceivably, I think this this company could be valued sort of at least 45 cents to 40 to 45 to 50 cents uh, using sort of similar metrics to the other um, com comparable companies on the ASX like Gascoigne. So I think, you know, it looks like they're, they're going to, this project will be a goer. Uh, I think their the economic studies uh, are going to be updated fairly shortly. Uh, it could be in the next uh, month or so. But then I, you know, I don't think Northern Star bought here, bought 20% of this stock for, for um, just for fun. Um, and it's not, given the stage they're at where they're, they're close to sort of um, firming up a, you know, a decision whether to, to mine this deposit and uh, get financing, it's, you, it's a, bit, uh, a bit late in the game for Northern Star just to be, you know, taking a punt as they would in some uh, early explorers here. So, and obviously they've got a, there's a large, um, Jundee is just about 80 to 100 kilometers north of, of Bronzewing. So, um, that's there's a clear exploration game here that Northern Star wants to lock up some of this exploration territory between Jundi and and Bronzewing and this this looks like a pretty uh, good acquisition for them to make so and there's other other miners nearby who, who might be interested so potentially some competitive tension there as well but I think this this uh, looks like it'll be a project one way or another whether it's through Northern Star or or Echo. So I think it, you can see here there's obviously been a lot more interest in the stock, particularly since uh, Northern Star took over, but it's had a great run from $0.10. Cents. Um, pulled back quite a lot from that that high when uh, I think that was around when Northern Star was buying in there. So logically, you'd think if they were pay, willing to pay $0.37 cents for it uh, back in, in January, they've probably got a pretty good feel for what they, wait, what they value it at, and it's obviously more than $0.37. Cents. So... Northern Star have been the the best performing gold stock on the ASX pretty much for the last five years, so I'm I'm happy to and they're you know they've got some real geological um, expertise as well, so if they if they think it's worth 37 cents I'm not going to argue with them so I'm happy to buy it at 27, uh, which I have done recently. On the chart it looks like you know had this long term sort of resistance level at 27. Not sure how meaningful that is. I don't I haven't followed the stock back for the last you know six or seven years, but pulled back to that level now and you'd expect that to be uh, the support zone going forward. Uh, some of the other stocks, so yeah, so Echo Resources is a company that I've 
really like here. And uh, as I was talking about before, Gascoigne is one of the others that I've um, been talking about in these videos for some time. I'll just bring up their chart as well. They had a good little announcement the other day. Um, there's been a spate of sort of uh, gold development updates recently. So they're, they're looking like they're going to be on into production by um, by June. They sort of be a, seem to be ahead of schedule. Haven't had any hiccups in construction. Costs are uh, under control from what I can tell. Uh, so it's really, you know, their their reserve base is actually smaller than um, than Echoes and and Gascoigne's got a market cap of about 250 million at this point, and and including um, you know debt, their enterprise value is probably more about 300. So they're so that shows you where Echo could be. I think uh, Gascoigne obviously has another project as well, which has some value, but maybe only you know up to 50 million dollars of value. So that, but anyway, I think that that shows what Echo can be. But yeah, this is a really good announcement. I like these these picture updates. It just gives you a, gives people who are um, unfamiliar with mining, you know, what's going on here, and uh, you know, this seems to be a pretty good. Um, they haven't had any any hiccups. Uh, it just starts to be. It looks like a well-run company, and um, and I'm I'm hopeful that their their production will, will follow the same trend. Um, on the chart, they're broken out nicely. I think on that construction update a couple of weeks ago, uh, they've broken out nicely above this 53 zone, which had been resistance for the last six months, and uh, looks like it's consolidating now above here. Low volume pullback here, like less than. You know, less than a couple hundred thousand shares traded each day for the last two weeks, and uh, I think uh, it's poised here to have another another run after maybe maybe a little bit more, um, you know, some more of these low volume days. But if, if they have a good announcement when the first gold pour comes out and there's they're living up to some of their um, feasibility study targets, I think it'll it's got potential to run to sort of 65 cents plus in the uh, the short term, you know, next couple of months. The other one, uh, Dacian, which is one that I've been talking about for some time as well here. Uh, I first started buying in here at about 2.20, uh, back in back in here in about two, early 2017. Obviously, it's, and it went back down to $1.50, and I was buying all the way down and um, you know holding my breath a little bit because it was a it was hard to buy on the way down here. But project looked to be of a higher quality than most. Uh, they've done their first gold pour last week, looking like a you know a very good, um, very good project. They've on, completed on time, on budget. Uh, haven't haven't really put a foot wrong to be honest, and that's kind of why I bought in. Uh, they just look to be a, a higher caliber than some of the equivalent ASX gold producers and developers. On the chart, it's really done nicely. Um, been knocking on this three this. It's a very good chart, actually, in terms of uh, obeying support and resistance levels. Uh, when it pulled back in uh, in early February, I added to my position at 259 uh, after selling some at sort of three bucks. But it was a really good opportunity to buy back in there when some of the gold stocks plummeted up with the with the U.S. share market troubles. Uh, but had a, a um, what's that? Almost a two-year high close there at uh, at 317. It'd been knocking on that a couple of times, but I think. With the uh, with the Australian gold price at knocking at uh, 1740 an ounce, um, Dacian's you know they've delivered some guidance numbers in here in this update as well. I think they're looking at uh, 30 to 40 thousand ounces in uh, in the uh, June quarter, and then uh, then they'll start hopefully they'll start hitting at that um, 180 to 210 thousand ounce uh, guidance range for 2018-19. Uh, uh, so that's and, they've, and they're hedged as well for 45,000 ounces. So there's there's not much, not a lot. They've got all the protection in place. They haven't put a foot wrong. Uh, and I think the market likes these quality companies. So I'm thinking it's um, poised to break out above this 317 level. The other thing, uh, I've, I've been done a few videos in the past and done a lot of work looking at the um, GDXJ, Junior Gold Mining Index, and Dacian is not currently in the index, but it has a market cap now above 600 million Australian dollars, so it's about 450 US, which is way above the the um, the limit to be entered to enter into the uh, GDXJ. Uh, it does have it, the liquidity has probably been a little bit low for the GDXJ up until now, so it's 
but the average volume has been 400,000 shares for the last three months. And I think this is only ASX. So when you include the Chiax, then maybe maybe up toward 450, 500,000 shares traded a day. And uh, so the, the GDXJ needs uh, US $1 million of turnover daily. So it's right up on that limit. Uh, it didn't make the rebalance date in, uh, which was in mid-March, but there'll be another one in mid-June. And I think if they if they keep hitting their targets and the share price stays above three bucks, uh, they'll be they'll enter into the GDXJ, and that will mean the GDXJ needs to buy something in the order of um, 10 million shares in in Dacian, um, but potentially a little bit more. So uh, it, might, it may be even up to 20 million. So this is that's going to be a huge uh, bid. That they need to they need to um, to get those shares and I it's a pretty tightly held stock and it's only it's only 200 million shares on issue so they'll struggle to get them and I think um, you know that's the sort of thing that could propel this stock up toward that all-time high around four bucks so I'm, I'm continuing to hold that one in my super fund it's been a really good performer for me over the last 18 months uh, and it's just a, another indication that you want to buy quality projects uh, run by quality people uh, and that's that's you want to, that's how big investors think, and I'm trying. One thing I've been trying to do in these videos is, is uh, you know, adopt the same approach to in investing in these gold stocks. Stick to quality, uh, and the big end of the market's generally done a lot better. So these, so I expect this company will continue to do well as the uh, institutional investors pile in now. Uh, even though it's you know fairly richly valued, I don't think it can. Uh, I think it keeps getting more richly valued, just because the quality of the project. So those three stocks, Echo, Gascoigne, Dacian, hold all of those now, and I'm, uh, you know, I think they're going to continue to do well. Uh, they're fundamentally strong, and the Australian dollar gold price is strong, so I think they're all good holds.